welcome back, or maybe I should be welcoming myself back. <laughs> it's been over six months since my last video, and I've been really excited to create videos again and share them all with you. Today, as I show you the start to finish process of creating this portrait, I'm going to dive into how I developed my own style in my first year as a full-time painter. And at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about how you can discover and achieve your own dream painting style as well. So be sure to watch through till the end. First of all, what a crazy year to go full-time as an artist, right? When I kicked off the year, I thought I'd be focused on how I could grow my business as fast as possible, but instead I had to learn how to keep my business resilient despite being on lockdown. And it took me down a bit of an unexpected path. I expected this year to be about working with students locally and booking up my schedule with commissions, but with photo shoots harder to plan and students impossible to visit for in-person lessons during the pandemic, my focus shifted. Instead of turning out commissions, I was free to experiment. And instead of working with students one-on-one, -on -one, I realized how, at its core, we all struggle with the same things. And we can help each other grow so much faster when we do so as a community rather than as self. And those two things together taught me a lot about style that I'm excited to share with you in this video. One question that comes up a lot about this when I talk to students boils down to basically, what is a style? How do you know if you have it? How do you make sure you're not just a cheap copy of another artist? Okay, so those are three questions, but they all come down to a single answer, which is that style is your innate voice as an artist. It is the sum of all of the art that you admire and that you learn from, and it is something we have as default. Sometimes we have to use technical exercises to unlock facets of that style, but it is there. And because you will always bring your unique experiences to the process, it means that your style will always be your own and not simply a copy. So here it is your permission to not worry about your style. If you don't know it yet, it will come, but don't let that rumination trip you up on your journey to finding it. The magic of that realization for me meant that I could stop worrying about whether I had permission, from whom I don't know, <laughs> to start selling work. And I didn't need to withdraw like a hermit to hone my craft before I could share it with others. So knowing that style wasn't something I had to worry about having, what next? In my case, it was wondering what my core influences were and asking whether I was actually spending the most time looking at and studying those artists' work. It's easy enough to think that as we hold this vague notion of art that is good, in our heads that this is enough to impel us toward progress and bring us ever closer to our goal, which is that style that we desperately wish we could commune with. But the work of singling out the pieces that you are most desperate and excited to exemplify is no small task. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that it is the single biggest roadblock for artists wanting to take their work to the next level. I think of it about the same way I think about drawing from your imagination, actually. So we believe we know exactly what our best friend or our spouse's face looks like. But when we're handed a blank sheet of paper and a pencil and asked to replicate their face from memory, we cannot even begin to do it. And the same is very much true here. In the abstract, we think we have this sense of exactly where we're going, but when it comes time to actually put that into practice, it is so much easier said than done. So what helped me and what in turn has really helped my students is actually taking the time to put together 
um, maybe a list isn't quite the right word, but perhaps something like a mind map of all of the work that you want to have influencing you. I found that this is the critical difference we're all looking for. This is what takes our trajectory, our goal from being something vague that is hard to realize and it suddenly makes it tangible and concrete and something that we can easily aspire toward in a practical, tangible way. From working with students though, I have learned that this is easier said than done. I like to think that my useless superpower is being tapped into what I'm feeling all of the time. And that enabled me to quickly rank the art that I love and respond to and understand and am drawn to. But if this is something you're struggling with, first of all, you are absolutely not alone. This is just objectively, I think, a much trickier exercise than we want to give it credit for. But second of all, I find that everything needs to start by seeing all of your influences in one place. It lets you rank everything and see which ones just don't seem to belong, and it'll remind you of pieces that are missing and ultimately help you to realize which styles you love, but don't need to personally create in order to enjoy them. And this leads me to the hard part filtering out everything but the core handful of paintings that embody exactly what you're interested in as a creator. It can take a lot of work to get there, but when you do, that's when you can chart exactly the steps you need to take to reach your goal. So what does this look like? When you see those handful of pieces all in one place, suddenly it's much easier to tell which exact subjects, color schemes, sizes, techniques, lighting, brushwork, and moods resonate with us. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. It also lets us realize which of those things we're already making progress toward, which I think we're often really quite bad at doing. We're really bad at giving ourselves credit for the work we've already put in and the progress we've already made. And it also shows us which of those components we're simply avoiding. In my case, when I took the time to actually sit down and do this exercise in a formal, structured way, I was honestly blown away. It was something I had done informally for myself, but then when I started working with my students on this, I had to actually show them step by step what this process entailed, and going through those motions was honestly game-changing. Before I went and did this exercise, I had this list of painters and paintings in my head that I absolutely loved, and I thought I had already done this really good job of culling out everything that really didn't need to be there. So I had all of these Daniel Keyes paintings, for instance, and I thought, okay, flowers have never spoken to me, but I love the way he paints flowers, so I really should spend some time doing this. And I dedicated a ton of free time, for instance, to furthering my ability to paint flowers. And on the one hand, that's great. It was absolutely time well spent, um, and I love kind of expanding my interests and horizons that way. But <laughs> when I actually saw all of my influences in one place, I realized there are no flower paintings here. There are some still life, um, but the subjects of the painting have nothing to do with flowers. And similarly, I had all of these portraits on my board and it occurred to me the only portraits I had been painting were commissions and they weren't done in the style that I was really interested in and excited about. And that's a big reason why you're seeing the piece that I'm working on here. Um, this piece is very much me deliberately looking at all of my influences 
and being able to make this bullet list of the qualities I'm super excited about. Everything from that kind of unfinished feel to the way the model is emoting to the way she's lit, um, being really particular about choosing the model I wanted to work with and being excited about um, rendering her as my subject. Those were things that I would not have had the wherewithal to actually do. And I would have thought that I did, but I promise you I would not have made this piece this year if I had not gone through and done this really important work on style. I realize we often assume that if we put in the work, our style will come. But the truth is, most of us wander a lot more when we sit down to paint than we actually realize. We choose subjects and compositions and techniques that are convenient instead of inspiring. So for me, a good example of this might be the way that I handle portrait commissions versus portraits that I paint on spec or for myself. Um, I'm, I know I'm going to feel free to be a lot looser. Um, I'm going to be able to explore compositions that aren't typical for commissions. And that's just portraiture. Um, another really good example is I was really interested in painting more plein air, um, painting more landscapes. And I thought that that meant <laughs> that I needed to travel the entire country. Um, but what really surprised me was just that when I looked at all the pieces I was most excited about, there were only two landscape subjects that really did it for me. Um, and those were snow scenes and then um, water scenes, so usually like streams or creeks or rivers. But if you told me to <laughs> go paint plein air, I wouldn't drive to the nearest waterfall or creek or whatever the case may be. Um, and if I happened to be traveling and I was in some place where it actually does snow, uh, chances are I wouldn't have gone and taken advantage of that to actually make the snow scene that I would love to create. Um, instead, I would probably just drive around until I saw like an interesting, oh my gosh, what's interesting here? <laughs> um, probably like an interesting barn or um, farmland, which can make for a really beautiful painting, but they aren't paintings I'm excited about. And they aren't paintings where I have a really granular understanding of what my style looks like with that subject. So now that I am back, I'm here on YouTube making videos for you all. I'm really excited that you're gonna see me exploring a lot more of this in upcoming videos. And not only that, but you're going to see how I really take my inspiration and I break it down to understand exactly what kind of exercises I need to do to develop any skills I might be missing um, and simply how it informs the way that I can best plan paintings. You know, when I look at my inspiration, I see paintings from Richard Schmidt, Daniel Keyes, Jeremy Mann, Nick Alm, Suchi Bosley, and so many others. And as I was mentioning earlier, they made me realize just how much I need to lean into painting portraits. And for some reason, I just avoided it before. I think partially because I thought that the only portraits that were going to be commercially viable would be commissions. But the truth is, is that I am strongest as a portrait painter and focusing on work that seemed a little bit more convenient or appealing in terms of um, perceived sellability. <laughs> um, it really set me back because I was making paintings that were harder for me and there were paintings that I wasn't as sure how to make look good. Another really good example of this actually is I have always drawn horses as a kid. I love them. And when I actually 
sat down to do this work, I realized I don't paint them. Um, I avoid it because I don't know. Um, I guess I just don't have a lot of examples of artists who've come before me and have done it. Um, but actually deliberately investigating this really gave me permission to go do what I'm actually good at and what I have the most fun painting. And ultimately, this all has given me permission to take what I do well and push myself to own every ounce of that instead of handicapping myself or the kind of art that I thought that I should make. And this is what I want for you too. If you're ready to go on that journey for yourself, you want to find your dream style, the kind of painting you just <laughs> can't even imagine making, but it would be the ultimate achievement for you. I want to invite you to join me on Monday, this coming Monday, January 24th at 2 p.m. Eastern. Then I'll be hosting a one hour training really going into detail on how I achieved this for myself so that you can take those same steps. I put a link to register below in the comments, so make sure if you are watching this in the first few days that it is out to go ahead and save your seat. This is the first time I've done anything like this, so I'm really excited to get to meet you all and chat with you all and become a bigger part of your journey and help you move toward your goals. There, I'm really going to be digging in step by step into what this process looks like and actually getting the opportunity to chat with you all one-on-one -on -one and answer questions about what this might look like for you. So if you think this could be really exciting for you, even if it doesn't work out schedule wise, just go ahead and use the link sign up um, because even if you aren't able to attend, there might be something I can do for you to help. And if unfortunately you're watching this after um, the training has happened, don't worry, I will swap out the link down in the description with something else for you. There's also going to be the opportunity for you to get to actually see the full real-time process of me making this painting complete with all of the commentary on exactly all of the techniques that I'm using and my thought process for every part of this. So if that seems intriguing to you, then this is definitely going to be worth your while. Additionally, this piece is available. So I will have a link to this piece so long as it remains available in the comments. Um, and I hope you will check it out if you are tempted to give her a home. This is easily one of my favorite pieces from the past year and I just know someone's really going to enjoy having this painting um, and I feel blessed to have it in my studio until that time comes. And don't worry, this is just the first of many pieces that will be available from work I've done over the past few months that is going to be going up on YouTube. I'm really excited for you to see just how much I've been working on. Um, that being said, if you love this piece, if you want to see more like it, make sure you do hit the bell icon so you are the first to see when a new video goes up and you can be the first to claim a piece that really speaks to you. And because it has been so long since I feel like I've had proper conversation with all of you, let me know in the comments what kinds of videos you're really excited to see now that I am back here on YouTube. What kinds of questions do you want me to answer? What kinds of paintings do you want to see? Um, what have you most missed <laughs> from me having posted videos over the past several months? One thing I'm really excited for this year is having even more flexibility to make the pieces I'm excited about and spend more time working with you all. So I'm just really excited to be able to actually take those questions, take those suggestions and run with them and make some really awesome paintings and 
some amazing and helpful videos for you all. And if you don't have any requests for me, um, or if you just want to answer another question in the comments, I would love to hear what you're focused on this year and what your goals are. You're going to notice that setting goals and laying roadmaps to achieve them are a big theme for this coming year. So I'm really excited to hear from you all on that front. So once again, if you are interested in discovering your dream style of painting and you want to lay a roadmap out to actually achieving that and feeling that sense of consistent improvement and knowing that the exercises that you're working on are actually really propelling you forward toward your goal, make sure you go ahead and click the link down in the description and I will see you then. In the meantime, because this is my first video back, I want to just reflect a little bit. I have to admit, I felt so unbelievably stiff when I began scripting this video. And here now, as I write this text and now as I read this back to you, I'm just so happy to be doing this again. I knew six months ago that I was only off YouTube temporarily so I could put this program together and find a way to work with a broader community of students and do that online in a way that was safe for the pandemic and that ultimately would let me work with more of you all. But six months was still really hard to be away from all of you. And I know I haven't been able to respond to all of the comments and all of your questions while I was working on building this program and working with the students I already have. But just trust me, I always would log on and just really enjoy reading all of the things you had to say. And I've just been really, really touched to get to know more and more of you this year. So thank you all for making this crazy, ridiculous year as my first year as a full-time artist, really quite magical, despite everything that we might expect. As for now, it's just really good to be back, and it feels like a long time coming. As I mentioned, I have a lot of paintings that I recorded from the past year, and even a lot that I've recorded so far this month. So there's a lot of really exciting videos coming your way. If you are ready to see more of those back here on a regular basis, make sure to subscribe if you have not already, and please like this video so that others can find it. I can't wait to talk to you in the next one, and until then, happy painting.